Anthropometric measurements. There are six key types of anthropometric variables collected in surveys. Age, sex, height, weight, edema, and MUAC, which stands for Middle Upper Arm Circumference. Weighing. To measure the weight of a child, place the scale on a hard and flat surface if possible. For example, concrete, solid ground, wooden board, but not on the height board. Place the scale in the shade or indoors if possible. If the scale overheats and does not work properly, move it to a cooler place and wait 15 minutes before trying again. Handle the scale with care and protect it from excess humidity. Ensure that the batteries are working before going to the field and carry a spare set. There are two methods of measuring a child using an electronic scale. One, direct. Measure the child by themselves. Children able to stand up can be weighed by standing on the scale. 2. Indirect Measuring the child in the arms of a mother or caregiver, also referred to as double weighing, applies for young children, children who are too weak, children who are disabled, or children who are restless and cannot stand still on their own. Direct weighing Generally, for older children. 1. Explain the procedure to the mother or caregiver. 2. Remove all clothing and jewelry. 3. Wait for scale to stop at 0.0, .0 or 0, 0.00 depending on the scale in use. 4. Ask child to stand on scale. 5. Wait until the number stops flashing before reading the weight measurements. 6. Measurer reads the weight out loud. 7. Assistant repeats the weight out loud to confirm with the measurer and records the weight. Double weighing. Younger or sick children. 1. Explain the procedure to the mother or caregiver. 2. Take off the child's clothing and jewelry. 3. Place the scale on a flat surface. Turn on the scale. 4. Ask the mother or the assistant to stand on the scale. 5. After the weight appears, press the hold or tear button to zero the scale. 6. Once 0.0, .0 appears, the child is given to the person standing on the weighing scale. The child must be held facing the person and should keep still. Only the person whose weight was used to zero the scale must hold the child to be weighed. 7. The weight displayed will be the child's weight. 8. The measurer reads the weight out loud. Assistant repeats the weight out loud to confirm and records the weight. Length Measure length when the child is less than 2 years of age or less than 87 centimeters. Use one inclusion criteria, age or height, and be consistent throughout the survey. 1. Explain the procedure to the child's mother or caregiver. 2. Remove the child's shoes and any other hair ornament on the top of the child's head. Clothing does not need to be removed for this measurement. 3. Place the child gently onto the board on his or her back with the head against the fixed vertical part and the soles of the feet near the cursor or moving part. The child should lie straight in the middle of the board, arms at their side, looking directly up. 4. The assistant should hold the child's head firmly but gently against the base of board. 5. The measurer places one hand on the knees to keep the legs straight, places the child's feet flat against the cursor with the other hand, and pushes the cursor against the feet firmly but gently. 6. The measurer reads and announces the length to the nearest 0.1 cm. 7. The assistant repeats the measurement out loud and then records the length to the nearest 0.1 cm. Muak.
Mid upper arm circumference measures the amount of soft tissue in the arm and reflects muscle density. It is often used for program monitoring and screening. Measurements are taken on the left arm and recorded to the nearest millimeter. 1. Explain the procedure to the child's mother or caregiver. 2. If possible, the child should stand straight and sideways to the measurer. 3. Bend the left arm at 90 degrees to the body. Place the muak tape along the upper arm and find the midpoint of the upper arm. The midpoint is between the tip of the shoulder and the elbow. 5. Mark the mid upper arm point with a pen. 6. Let the left arm hang relaxed at the side of the body. 7. Wrap the muak tape around the midpoint. 8. Pull the tape until it fits securely around the arm. The tape should not be left too slack or pulled too tightly. The tape should touch the skin all the way around the arm but not make a dent in the skin. 9. At the Muak reading window, the measurer reads and announces the Muak measurements to the nearest millimeter. 10. The assistant repeats the measurement out loud and then records to the nearest millimeter. Introduction and Age By taking anthropometric measurements of children between 6 and 59 months, we can effectively measure the nutritional status and risk of mortality within a target population. This video will help to demonstrate how to take anthropometric measurements of children aged between 6 and 59 months and how to create an events calendar to estimate a child's age. In order to ensure good quality surveys, much attention should be paid to the daily calibration of the measuring equipment as well as anthropometric measurement techniques. We can determine the nutritional status of a population by measuring weight for height, weight for age, and height for age. Height for age and weight for age are more difficult to take accurately because age is not reliably reported in many populations, especially where birth recording is insufficient. To help us determine age, we will create an event calendar which is covered later in the video. To determine a child's actual age, refer to the immunization card or other administrative documents such as birth certificate, child's health book with the child's date of birth. In case the child does not have an immunization card or other administrative documents with their date of birth, age estimation is done using a local events calendar or comparing with the neighbor's child whose age is known. 1. Ask whether or not the child was born before or after a neighboring child whose age is known. 2. The local events calendar must include the past 60 months, that is 5 years. The important sections include seasons, for example, beginning of rainy season, dry season, months in a year, major events such as religious holidays, Tabaski, Christmas, Mulaud, national holidays, local holidays, for example, market days and construction. 3. Start by locating the year of birth on the local calendar. Ask about major events that occurred during the year the child was born, number of occurrences of an annual event, for example, child has been alive to celebrate Christmas, Ramadan, etc. three times. 4. Determine the month of birth within that year. Try to get as specific as possible by determining during what season the child was born, for example, rainy season, dry season, winter, etc. Ask if a child was born before or after a major event during the year. Continue asking questions to identify the month of birth of the child as accurately as possible. Height Measure height when child is more than or equal to 2 years of age or more than or equal to 87 centimeters. Use one inclusion criteria, age or height, and be consistent throughout the survey. 1. 
explain the procedure to the child's mother or caregiver. 2. Place the height board upright in a location where there is room for the measurers around the board. 3. Remove the child's shoes and any hair ornament or a knot on the child's head and let her or him stand on the middle of the height board. 4. The assistant, positioned on the right-hand side of the child, should firmly press the child's knees and ensure that their heels are touching the board. 5. Ensure that the child's head, shoulders, buttocks, knees and heels touch the board. 6. The measurer, positioned on the left-hand side of the child, should position the head and the cursor at right angles, the mid-ear and eye socket should be parallel to the ground, and the hair should be compressed by the cursor. 7. The measurer reads and announces the height to the nearest 0.1 centimeters. The assistant repeats the measurement out loud and records it. Edema Edema results from an accumulation or an excess of extracellular fluid in the body due to severe nutritional deficiencies. Edema is a very rare event and a common source of errors. Be careful of misclassifying edematous children. If possible, show edematous children at training. Ensure at least one team leader can accurately identify edema. The team leader should confirm edema with the supervisor. It can be quite painful if the measurer presses hard on the skin. Hard pressure is not required to test edema. Moderate thumb pressure is applied on the tops of the feet or just above the ankle on the inside of the leg where the shin bone is below the skin. The pressure is kept for about 3 seconds. Count to 3 when administering the test for edema, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000 in English, pronouncing the words carefully. This takes about 3 seconds. If there is edema, a pitting remains for some time, at least a few seconds, where the edema fluid has been pressed out of the tissue. For more information, visit the anthropometry section in the Capacity Building Toolbox on the SMART website www.smartmethodology.org